In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen, wishing you a blessed feast of Theophany. I um, want to talk a little bit about this feast, uh, and you probably hear that the, the feast referred to several names. Uh, theophany is the one that we tend to want to we use most often, and that's what the one that we should use. Basically, theophany is theu, meaning God, phenia, manifestation, theophania, or so the God manifestation of God, as we heard in uh, the in the synexarium. Sometimes we refer to it as epiphany, but I wanted to share with you what does epiphany mean. So you actually kind of will be geared towards saying theophany more. Epiphany, basically epi, meaning above, phenia, manifestation. So it's a general manifestation versus the manifestation of God, the manifestation of the U, theophany. So uh, in the old days, they used to refer to that feast also as the day of illumination or the feast of lights. And it kind of corresponds also to the Jewish feast of the feast of lights that they, that they one of the feasts that they celebrated also. So when you look at when you look at it from that perspective that that God shone among humanity, it says that God is light, uh, and, and and in that baptism when we saw the Father when we heard the Father and we saw the Son being baptized and the Holy Spirit descending uh, on on the Son as the dove, basically God is light and He had appeared to illumine those who sat in darkness, which which because of our sin we sat in darkness and there was a disconnect between us. And in the region of the shadow of death, like Matthew 4, 16. And ultimately, he was baptized to save us and to save the race of mankind. And in the Feast of Theophany, basically, it reveals the Holy Trinity. The Trinity is a mystery, and, and, and there's no way we can understand or com you know, completely partake or, or, or understand the Trinity. But we got a glimpse in it, in that feast. Uh, and and it's and that, that, the, the gospel in Matthew 3 and Mark 1 and Luke 3 talks a lot about the baptism. But in the Theophany, it reveals the Holy Trinity where, uh, to the whole world. Uh, and like the God the Father spoke, this is my only begotten Son. And then the Son was being baptized by St. John the Forerunner. And then the Holy Spirit descended upon the, the Son in the form of the, 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 the dove. I wanted to kind of share what St. John Damascus shares about this feast. He says that the Lord was baptized not because he himself had need for cleansing. So, and same thing when we were talking in the morning, when he fasted, it's not because he needed to fast, but we were hidden in it. It says, so here the same thing, St. John Damascus saying, is when he was baptized, not because he himself had needed to be caused, but to bury human sin in the water. So he took our sin to bury our sin and then also to fulfill the law. And this is, you're going to get that from the, the, the discourse between St. John and Christ when he told him, I'm not, you know, who am I to baptize you? And he said, well, let it be fulfilled to fulfill the law, to fulfill all righteousness. Also, Christ was baptized to reveal the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And, and, and in, that, in, in that baptism, we saw also to sanctify the nature of water. And this is something that is really sometimes we forget. When, when the fall happened, there was a disconnect between uh, humanity and God and, 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 and his creation. Uh, and, and ultimately in St. John Damascus, it says, when he was baptized to offer us the form and example of baptism that we also ought to baptize. So really, when Christ what, didn't really need to be baptized, but he actually baptized creation. Uh, and this is a very interesting perspective, is that he would, well, didn't need to be, but actually he connected in, in, in that baptism, Jesus reintegrated himself in creation after the fall where there was a disconnect. So really, the, there is a call for each one of us right now that Christ is baptized to reconnect with us. And a call for each one of us is that we ought to live life reconnecting it with him. With him. In Galatians, it says, for as many of you as have been baptized in Christ, when you're baptized, you put on Christ. So you are, you have Christ on you. And ultimately, in Second Corinthians, it says that now, then that you're, you put on Christ, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you are a new creation. And that's why in the baptism, the child is a new creation. We give him a new name, dressed in white, and so on. So the old man has passed away. Behold, the new man has come. 
So in this feast, when we're celebrating, it's important for us to reconnect to the Lord. Just, you know, that's when he baptized, was baptized, he, he reconnected his creation to him. I pray that all of us, you know, consider our connection with the Lord and renew our, 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 our relationship with him. Uh, and, 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 and we pray that this blessed feast that would cause us, each one of us, to, to reevaluate our, our life and reconnect with the Lord and all the glory be to our God forever. Amen.